All right, so this is a very nice example of a solitary fibrous tumor in the olden days. These were called hemangiopericytomas, and we still use the term sometimes hemangiopericytic vessels for this very unique vascular pattern that we see, but I will point out it is just a vascular pattern, okay? This is the characteristic feature that's seen in many solitary fibrous tumors is these dilated, branching, staghorn-shaped vessels. Um, but we can see that vascular pattern in a wide range of other tumors. Synovial sarcomas often have vessels like this. Fibrosarcomatous dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans has vessels like this. Many different tumors can have dilated staghorn vessels, okay? Sometimes they're really big, branchy vessels like this. Other times, you just can have small vessels like that that kind of maybe branch once, or maybe they're just dilated and kind of round. So the range of vessels that you can see in a solitary fibrous tumor is pretty broad. It can go from these small dilated ectatic vessels all the way up to these huge ones like this, okay? The other thing is there's cellularity here. There's a, a sheets of spindle cells in this area, and in these areas, there's a lot less cellularity. Look, it's more pink and less blue. So there's more cellularity here. Over here, there's more collagen and less cells, fewer cells. So that range of, of a cellular with hypocellular sclerotic zones and the presence of dilated vessels from low power, we haven't even gone in close yet, but from low power, those things should make you think of solitary fibrous tumor. Oh, and I meant to point out at the beginning, hemangiopericytoma, I believe, is still used in the central nervous system. I leave that to the neuropathologist to, to comment on. Um, but elsewhere in the, the soft tissue, outside of the CNS, we don't really use the term hemangiopericytoma anymore. There is one tumor in the nose called a glomangiopericytoma or a sinonasal hemangiopericytoma-like tumor, those are um, thought to be variations uh, and kind of re relatives of glomus tumor. And that's about the only time that the name hem hemangiopericytoma comes up anymore in modern um, soft tissue pathology, um, again, outside of the neuropath world. Okay, so the cells, let's go closer. The cells of solitary fibrous tumor are usually these bland, oval to spindle shape, kind of plump spindle cells, or oval uh, nuclei, and they often have abundant collagen in between them. Sometimes you get these like ropey uh, collagen bundles in the backgrounds. The vessels often have thick sclerotic walls. There's often sclerosis, and sometimes there are big zones of, oh, like here, these big areas of hyalinization where there's very few cells right around the vessels. That's characteristic of solitary fibrous tumor. And then over here, in the more cellular zone, you can see the cells again, very bland usually. There are malignant forms and high-risk forms of SFT. That's a conversation for another day. But if you start seeing pleomorphism or a lot of mitoses or necrosis, those are features that can concern you that maybe you're dealing with uh, one of the um, uh, higher risk forms, okay? And then the cells in general are supposed to be arranged like this in a patternless pattern. Um, I believe it was Dr. Stout in the early 1900s who described um, the patternless pattern. And uh, these, these cells are just kind of haphazardly arranged. Sometimes you can see them in kind of short fascicles or areas that look almost like a touch story form or a bit palisaded. See like here, these cells are kind of lining up. So sometimes there is a little pattern, but usually they're kind of uh, just kind of thrown together and swirling around here uh, randomly with the collagen and the dilated vessels. Solitary fibrous tumor is classically positive for CD34. And I will point out to you that CD34 is positive in many different fibroblastic tumors, okay? So it is not a specific marker. You have to use it with a great deal of caution. It can be very helpful because it's a very sensitive marker for some things, but it's not specific. It can be seen in DFSP and solitary fibrous tumor and spindle cell lipoma and on and on and on. And also in vascular tumors too. So it's useful in certain contexts, but CD34 is relatively relatively nonspecific. Um, the uh, other thing is that, that solitary fibrous tumors have a translocation that produces them. It's the NAB2 STAT6 translocation. And this is one of those times where, for kind of a complicated reason, the fish um, looking for that gene fusion doesn't always work perfectly, and the um, immunostain actually works really well. So in these tumors, I don't send for molecular. If I need to do something to confirm the diagnosis, I order a STAT6, S-T-A-T-6, 
STAT6 immunostain, and it's a beautiful, very nice, strong nuclear marker that will stain these, and it's relatively sensitive and specific so far um, for solitary fibrous tumors. So STAT6 is the uh, marker to remember for solitary fibrous tumor.